I am so excited for you guys to meet my mom today. This is my mom. She is 63. She is funky, artistic, creative, and she is the original glam girl of the family. She is rightfully the glam queen. She came all the way from Edmonton to visit me here in Ontario this week, and I somehow managed to sucker her into a complete makeover for the show. I cut and colored her hair, I did her makeup, and then I threw her an epic outdoor birthday party with all of her friends. It was a good day, you guys, it was a good day. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a detailed tutorial of her party makeup, and I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks for a glam makeup look over 60. Let's go. After my mom put on her skincare, I started the makeup application off with a glowy primer. The one I chose today was Charlotte Tilbury's Wonder Glow. Now, to prime her eyelids for the shadow work, I use Sigma's Eyeshadow Base Primer. If you watch this channel a lot, you probably know that I'm not a huge advocate for eyelid primers. I find that using a concealer set with a powder to be the same. Like I really find that it does the same job without you needing to spend more money on more products, have more stuff in your makeup bag, you know, all of that. But honestly, this one, it got sent to me uh, last week and after testing it out for the whole week, I tested it out on myself all week, I actually really do love the formulation of it. I understand why so many of you really love eyelid primers. It has amazing reviews online for a reason, right? The consistency of the product is tacky, so the shadow becomes very pigmented on top of it. It holds the shadows on the lid without creasing all day long. If you have issues with shadows creasing or not staying, or if you live in extremely hot and humid weather, or you have very oily eyelids, I really do recommend this primer. I know that I don't normally recommend eyelid primers, but this one is excellent. It really, really is. Even though I used an eyelid primer though, I still very lightly set it with the powder so that I could blend more easily on top of it. This is a bit tacky, so it will make your pigments stronger, but I needed a lot of blendability today because I was doing a bit of like a smoky, a lighter smoky eye, but a smoky eye nonetheless. So if you find that you're using a primer and your eyeshadows are sticking too much, just put a little bit of powder on it and it's gonna give it like a satin finish that you can blend on top of it. For the shadow work, I started by contouring out her crease with a warm brown from the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette. Using a fluffy crease brush, I used windshield wiper motions to add depth to the area above the lid. Now, when contouring out the crease like this, make sure to also do it when the eyes are open and looking forward. So you can do it when your eyes are closed, but then open, look forward, and do it again. If you don't open the eyes when you're contouring, sometimes what will happen is you'll actually lose the shading when the eyes do open because the placement will be a little too low. This is very likely to happen on more mature eyes that have hooding or heaviness here. You know, you'll do all this beautiful blending and you'll open the eyes and you can't see a thing. So make sure that after you blend, you look in the mirror, you might have to bring your shadow a little higher than you think to be able to actually see it when your eyes are open. To bring the lid forward, I use this beautiful color called Shimmering Pearl, which is a vanilla highlight tone from the Too Faced Born This Way Natural Nudes palette. This is a fantastic palette for neutral tones. So if you need something with a lot of neutral variety, I do recommend this one. I use it all the time in all different skin tones. I get the most pigment payoff with shimmers when I use my finger to apply it in a dabbing motion. So that's what I did. And then I blended the transition from the lid to the crease with a crease brush again. Now I wanted to smoke out the sides of her eyes, this area over here. My mom has always been and is a glam gal, right? I just said that. She's the original glam girl. I learned everything that I know from her. I used to watch her put on makeup for hours. She just loves it. She's definitely not a natural day makeup type of person, especially not for a party. So we needed to intensify while still staying flattering. So a great way to do that is to dip into a darker shadow. In this case, I use a dark brown shadow and a small, more more densely packed crease brush to create a little triangle from the lash line to the crease. Creating depth right here in the outer corners will give you like a smoked out effect without too much darkness like everywhere on the eye. This is a great way to even take a day makeup look and make it a night makeup look. Add that little triangle of darkness in the corners of the eye for a touch of drama that doesn't feel like it's too much. I've been thinking of doing an entire video on different makeup brushes that I have, which ones 
are essential to go from like a day look to a night look. What you need in your kit to create pretty much any look. So many brushes are amazing, but so many brushes are pretty unnecessary. So if you guys want me to make a video all about makeup brushes, what they do, what they're intended for, which ones you should get, then definitely let me know in the comment section because I'm always reading comments and trying to make the content that's super helpful for you. My next step was to line her eyes. In order to keep the liner super soft, but still defined, I used a dark brown pencil and then I actually smoked it out by dipping into a black eyeshadow and going over it with a blending brush. So this combination of the brown waxy liner and the black shadow blended together creates like a brown blackish diffusion on the lash line that's smoky but not too harsh. Then as always I use a q-tip with some moisturizer to clean up the fallout while simultaneously prepping the under eye skin for makeup. Now pay attention to how I always sharpen up the corners of the eyes with the q-tip when I'm doing this cleanup. By doing this technique by lifting up here I'm able to actually lift that eye line up which is extremely flattering on a more mature face. Every time I'm cleaning fallout on anyone, but especially on a woman over 60, I always make sure that my lines are moving up. So the shadow's moving up so that when the rest of the makeup is on, she looks like, you know what I mean? She gets that like lifted effect. For foundation, I use the Estee Lauder Double Wear, which gives amazing coverage and a very long lasting wear time. And then I tackled the under eyes with a brand new color corrector by Vasanti called Liquid VO2. This product is specifically made for neutralizing under eye discoloration on warm and medium skin tones. So it was perfect for my mom. She has the perfect skin tone for this product. Because it is so orange, it's a fantastic color corrector for neutralizing blue or even purple tones. I also use this on a dark mark that she had on her nose and on other areas that had some discoloration, it worked incredibly well. So if you have similar coloring to us or if you are darker and you struggle with your under eyes, you should give this product a try. It's really very cool. I don't recommend it for lighter skin though because it will be too dark for you. It's gonna be too orange and too dark. But if you have medium toned skin, darker skin, very warm skin, then give it a shot. It's a, it's a very cool under eye product that I haven't seen before. After blending that product out with a damp beauty blender, I just let it settle and dry down for a bit before going in with anything else in that area. Okay, let's talk a little bit about brows. My mom doesn't have a lot of brow hairs and I can relate to that because neither do I. <laughs> Okay, neither do I. So she got them tattooed several years ago and over time the tattoo significantly faded and turned a little bit gray in tone. This is totally normal, it always happens, but like anything, we can fix it with makeup. So what I did first was I filled them in by following the lines that she already has from the tattoo with a warmer dark brown pencil. Even though her hair is a cooler, darker tone, if you go really dark and cool on the brows, it can look very harsh, especially on a more mature face. So I'd never go in with like a soft black pencil for her because it would be just way too stark. She also has very petite little features so a dark black brow would be way too much for her. It would have instantly made her face feel quite out of balance. My goal with brows is definition without harshness. I personally made the mistake of going too bold with my brows for years and years and now I, I can't unsee it. It's all I see. So I'm very careful to define the brows without overpowering them. If you notice the brows right away, it, they're probably overdone. Another important brow tip is to keep the inner corner, so in here, the inner corners of the brow, softer so that you have stronger definition on the tails and the ends that then gets softer as you move towards the middle of the face. Because she doesn't have a lot of hair, we still need to add pigment without this area getting to be too square or having too much of an edge. So the way that I like to do that is by shading the ends more strongly, but actually sketching tiny, tiny hairs on the inner part of the brow. Now wax-based products like brow pencils, they have a tendency to move in heat, okay? So because I knew we were gonna be spending a lot of time outdoors, in the heat, it was a really hot day, I went over the pencil with a brow powder to set the wax base and make it more bulletproof, just make it more waterproof overall. If 
if you're someone that fills your brows in a lot and you're finding that it's moving a lot or it's not looking good at the end of the day, then try doing your pencil first and then setting it with a powder. This will make a really big difference. It will make it bulletproof. That, that small step won't take you too much time, but it really will kind of waterproof the brows. Now to highlight and contour, everyone's favorite part. So after letting the Vasanti corrector dry down a little bit, I decided to highlight a little bit of the depth with a concealer that was slightly lighter than her skin tone. I also applied a little on the outer corner of the eyes to lift. With my NYX contour stick in medium, I chiseled out her cheekbones and her jawline. My mom really hates her neck. That's something that has bothered her for years. So I also took a little extra time to put that into the shadows with some contour and make it a little less noticeable for her. Just blend that out a little bit, put it in the shadows. After blending it all out, I set under the eyes with the Vasanti Brightening Powder, which is specifically made for under eye skin. I also press that same powder into the areas of the skin that tend to get a little bit oily over time. To finish her eyes off, we decided to add a little more smoke underneath them. We got very inspired by this photo of Kris Jenner, and by we, I did. <laughs> I love this photo of Kris Jenner. I think my mom kind of looks like her. So I added that same brown liner, and then I softened it with a blending brush. My dad, of course, saw us working away, and just had to sneak his way in for a kiss. Twice, two kisses. Dad, dad, if you're watching. After adding mascara, I applied my favorite lashes for mature or hooded eyes, which are the Ardell Naked Lashes in 420. I love these so much. My mom even mentioned how they're incredibly comfortable for a full day of wear. I'm actually wearing them today. I just love them so much. They're so natural, they're so comfortable, and they look amazing on everyone. All right, as you can see here, I put a little mascara blob on her cheek by accident. So I wanted to keep this in and not cut it out because if this happens to you, what you wanna do is you wanna wait until the blob dries. Don't try to fix it when it's wet because it will smear and make a mess. If you wait until that mascara blob is dry, then you can remove it quite easily with a Q-tip. For lips, I use Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk Lipstick in Medium. You can actually get the mini versions of this lipstick with the matching liner. They're so great. Pillow Talk is such a universally flattering pink nude lipstick. If you have fair skin, you can get the Pillow Talk Original. If you have medium skin like my mom and I, Pillow Talk Medium looks great. And if you have deeper skin, Pillow Talk Intense is lovely. It's just lovely, lovely, lovely on on women with that, that beautiful deep chocolate skin. I will leave a link to those lipsticks along with everything else I used in the description box below. For her finishing touches, I added a pink MAC blush to her cheekbones and a light matte shadow to her brow bone and tear duct as a highlight, and then black liner on the waterline on the top and bottom. Adding a black to the top waterline makes your lashes look denser, so it's kind of awesome if you want your lash lines to look really dense. Add a black to the inner waterline, so on the inside. And then adding it to the bottom actually makes your eyes look more almond. Adding black to the bottom does shrink the eye size. So if you have very small eyes or you want a more open eye effect, then I don't recommend it. But my mom has always loved how it looks on her, always, always. Um, she just loves how her eyes look super almond when she does that. It's her staple look, you know? That's just her look. And makeup really has no rules. It's just preferences. I find sometimes when I make these videos for women above 60 or above 50, there's a lot of um, comments about like rules, like you shouldn't have done this or you shouldn't have done that or like you're not allowed to do that after 50. And, Makeup is just art. You know, that's like saying you're not allowed to paint a picture that way. You're not allowed to use that brush with that paint texture. Like there, there really are no rules. It just creates different effects. So yeah, black liner on the inside of the eye, it does make the eye look smaller. It also makes it look more almond. It also makes it look quite sexy. It also gives you kind of a cat eye vibe. And if the person that you're doing the makeup on or yourself really loves how that looks, despite like the rules after 60 or whatever, just do what makes you feel good, boo. Do what makes you feel good. And that's my mom's signature look, you know? It makes her feel good. And I think it looks damn good on her. Here is our finished result. This is my mom when she came to visit. This is how she looked after I did her cut and color. And this is her complete glam transformation with curls, makeup, and all of the things. She looks so cute and glamorous without her glasses on but she also looks amazing with them on because they're so funky and they're fabulous, just like her. What was your favorite part of this look? Let me know in the comments below. This video is over. <laughs>